o'clock and it's time to get started. Hello and welcome to the writing webinar. Eight tips. I was about to say six, but it is eight tips to start writing your best selling novel. I am happy you're here. I hope you learn a lot. I hope you are ready to take notes and get started. So I'm going to share my screen. It's moving kind of slow. All right, here we go. Um, beginning. There we go. Okay, the live workshop with Lorna. Eight tips to start writing your best-selling novel. I am Lorna Lewis. I am your accountability coach and your writing coach. And like I said, I really hope that you learn a lot from this webinar. I really try to share some very valuable information that you can use in your writing um, from this day forward. So we're going to dive right on in. So this is for you. You know you're in the right place and this is the webinar for you if you're tired of just talking about the book you want to write one day and you are ready to get it done. If you're ready to introduce yourself to the world as a published author, not an aspiring author, no longer aspiring, published or working toward being published. If you're ready to be an example to those around you to show them what happens when you do put in the work and start living your dream, start accomplishing your goals. Does this sound like you? Are you always talking about the book idea you have? Or maybe you get excited about writing and you're all pumped up and then nothing happens. Um, don't know the first thing about writing, but you want to learn. Or maybe you sit down to write and you can't get past the first few words. Maybe you wrote a book and you're not really sure how to publish it the right way. Or maybe you just can't seem to make your story flow smoothly. Or you don't know how to bring your characters to life. Maybe you get stuck when you're trying to thicken the plot and make it more interesting. Or you just can't seem to squeeze right into your already overloaded, over hectic schedule. Or maybe you're just not sure if the idea that you have for writing is marketable. Will people actually buy it? Are you constantly questioning, can I pull this off? Who am I to write this book? So in the next 60 minutes, I am going to show you how to find an idea and turn it into a best-selling novel. I'm going to also show you how to shift your mind from aspiring writer to working author and how to make writing easier and faster. So, you ready for some good news? The information you're about to receive is absolutely free. It is tried, it is true, it works, but in order to gain all that you can from this webinar, you have to stick around until the end because I have a very special offer that's coming at the end and I don't want you to miss it. So here's what I see in the literary world today. New authors not investing enough time in developing their craft and they're struggling to sell their work. Many new authors have a lot of great ideas, but they just can't seem to organize it and make it flow into a well-developed, well-put-together novel. Or there are published authors who spend thousands of dollars on books that they've written and they sit and they sit. And I don't know about you, but I do not have thousands of dollars to sit in a box at my house. So can you relate to any of that? If so, allow me to tell you what's really going on. The real problem is these authors and aspiring authors haven't developed the right mindset. 
So once you develop the right mindset, you will find that you'll have clarity on what you want to write, the story you want to tell, and who you're writing this story for. Because let's be clear, your story is not for everybody. We wish that it was, but that's not always the case. And you'll feel more confident in your ability to write your book. You also master the art of developing the plot, creating characters that draw in the readers and leave them craving for more. So let's dig in. Who am I? I'm Lauren Lewis. I've been coaching or teaching for over 16 years. I self-published my first novel, October 2009. Um, that novel, I went from selling very little to being on a bestsellers list by my third novel. And I've coached aspiring authors, everything I've learned over the years about being a best-selling author, how to put their story together, how to make it so that people want to read your story. So I've had the opportunity to attend many seminars. I've learned from national bestselling and New York Times bestselling authors. I've also attended workshops. I read books. I watched videos. And everything I'm about to share is all that I've learned over these past eight years of writing. These are tips that's allowed me to go from published to bestselling. So I can tell you firsthand that they work. If it worked for me, it'll work for you. So we're going to start with tip number one, and that's to start where you're inspired. Start where you're inspired. What does that mean? It means you don't have to write your novel in chronological order. You write where you're inspired. When you get a story idea, sit down and write that scene. The one that made you say, oh, that would be a great story. That's where you start writing. So many people have an idea and they leave it in their head because they never, they don't, they're thinking about how am I supposed to start? What am I going to do with it? I don't know if I have enough material to make this into a whole story. It does not matter. Write that scene. Research shows that only 3% of aspiring authors actually finish their books, 3%. This is why writing a scene that inspires you is so important because that scene excites you. That scene is doing something for you and it will help you to develop your story, but you have to get it out. It needs air, it needs to breathe. If your scene is in your head, nothing happens. It's not until you put it on paper that it you give it life, and that's when the ideas will start to flow. Separate yourself from the other 97% who did not finish their books. I love that quote by Steve Jobs, think different. In order to do different, you have to think different. And like I said, I'm an author, but I'm also an educator, so there's homework. Your first assignment is to write the scene that is in your head right now. Whether it's for a story you had started or if it's for a story that you're currently working on, doesn't matter, write the scene that's in your head right now. Okay, this thing is really in my way. I'm sorry, <laughs> Let me see if I can move it. I guess not. Okay, Robert Frost reminds us that it's the road less traveled that gives us the greatest reward. So we want to take the road that a lot of people don't. We want to be different. This is the Shonda. The Shonda is an educator who knew she had a story to tell, but something kept her from starting. Um, we talked about it, and I noticed the more she talked, the more excited she became, especially when she told one part of the story. And it was toward the end of her journey. Um, but she didn't think that, okay, I should start writing that. That's the end. I need to, I need to figure out how I'm going to start this. And I told her, gave her the same assignment, go home and write what you told me. Go home, 
write what you told me. It doesn't matter that it's the end of the story. That's the scene that has you right now. Get that out. Everything else will work around it. She did. And today, Deshauna's finishing up her book. She's been wanting to write this book for the past 13 years. And today, she's finishing her book because she started. So that's tip number one. Tip number two is to observe. Story ideas are all around you, but you have to be aware and observant of them. You have to learn how to turn off the noise inside your head and really listen and really pay attention to what's going around you. If you're out and about, pay attention to the people, pay attention to the scenery, pay attention to what's happening, pay attention to body language, to responses, to facial expressions, all of that stuff. Don't worry about what you're going to do when you get home. Don't worry about what happened when you, before you got there. Pay, be in the moment. Pay attention and observe. You never know. The next thing, the next thing you see, the next person you meet, the next conversation you overhear could be something that changed your whole story. But you'll never know if you miss it. So get out your head and pay attention. Most stories always begin with what if. What if? So I saw this picture. And initially... I don't know why I paid attention to the first, the ladies up front, but I really paid attention to the lady in the back with the white handbag and talking on the phone. And I was like, what if she somehow related to one of these ladies, but don't know it? Or what if one of these ladies, her long lost sister, and she's been looking for her long lost sister and she's standing right there and she doesn't know it. Like just what if? When I see people, when I see things, I don't know, it just happens. It's just the other day, I saw a guy walking down the street and I had this, what if, what if he just did something that was not right? Because he kind of looked like he may have just gotten into some trouble and he was just walking down the street. I could have had a whole story around that one guy walking down the street just from that one, what if. Pay attention to the what ifs because it could help your story. So, Homework assignment number two, the next time you're out and about, find some what ifs. If one really stand out, one really interests you, write it down, put it in your phone, remember it, and use it. Okay, tip number three is to think outside the box. Think outside the box. Sometimes we have story ideas that just come to us. Sometimes we don't. Sometimes the desire to write comes before the story idea itself. So now you're trying to figure out, well, what am I supposed to write about? I don't know what, what, what story idea. Where am I going to find a story idea? Nothing's happening that I see. But that's when you may have to go searching for a story idea and think of places that you could look. And sometimes it's places that you're not even thinking about, like advice columns. I really don't know if we still have advice columns, to be honest with you, because I don't get the newspaper, but I'm pretty sure there are some online, like your Dear Abby columns that they used to have a long time ago. Advice columns still exist. I'm pretty sure if you search for them, people have the most interesting questions, and you can use those questions. They have advice columns, on, not advice columns, but they have advice segments on radio shows. You may use one of their stories. Nothing is new under the sun. You can use it, make it your own. Blogs, if it's something particular that you're writing about, go to a blog. It may give you an idea of what you, some information you can use in your book, in your novel. <gasps> the Bible, <laughs> the Bible. Now you all know there are some stories in the Bible. Oh my goodness. Can you imagine if some of this stuff that was told in the Bible happened today in modern time, like the Virgin Mary? Can you imagine if that happened today? A woman trying to prove that even though she's pregnant, she's a virgin. But because it's in the book and you're creating a story, she, she has to you have to develop it in a way where she's losing. She, she's about to lose something. 
by having this baby. Either she's a nun and it goes against everything she believes. It goes against everything that everyone around her believes. And she's trying, she's fighting to prove that she really is a virgin. Or if she, her husband was away, maybe in the Soviet armed forces, and he's been gone over a year and she's pregnant. How do you prove that? How do you prove that? I didn't do anything. I can only imagine. Can you imagine the drama? The drama. That's what story. The Bible full of drama, by the way. Make it your own. People watching, we talked about that. Listen to music. Music is just a story with a tune. Listen to music. It may inspire you to write your story. Our writing prompts. If you're familiar with Pinterest, full of writing prompts. They have some great writing prompts. Use one. Start writing whatever the prompt is. Nine times out of ten, the more you write, you will end up creating a totally different story from the one that the prompt started with because your ideas, again, are going to start flowing once you get them out. Watch the news, the world news. Very interesting information. Watch the news. You will find, pretty sure, a lot of great ideas from watching the news. And tip number four, train your brain for writing. Again, train your brain for writing. This one works for writing and just in life in general. Whatever goals you have, you really want to pay attention to tip number four because a lot is about to be explained about why it's so hard for us to get started on new things. This is about to change your life. Your brain is wired for failure. <gasps> failure. But not on purpose. The brain's job is to protect you. And the brain cannot tell the difference between when you are excited about something or when you're afraid. It's the same feeling with the brain. So the brain's job is to stop you from doing whatever it is you're about to do because it's unfamiliar and it could be dangerous because it takes you out of your comfort. It's no longer something the brain recognizes. So it will try to stop you. It will try to stop you by bringing up your past experiences, um, past failures, excuses, like everything will come up to say, you know what, maybe I should just chill out, go on and do what I've been doing all these years. I mean, it's, it, 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 it apparently I'm safe. I'm safe in that area, even though it's not what you want. So you have to help the brain. And that's the good news. There are two ways, at least two ways, that you can train your brain to allow you to write. You retrain it to allow you to write. Number one, you have to recognize that creating stories is nothing new. It's not a new experience. It's something you do all the time. So don't be nervous about it because you do it already. And I found this picture to show you that you do it already. If you live alone and you've been at work all day and you drive up to your house and this is what you see, your door is wide open. Without even getting out your car, without even stepping in your house, you have already created a scene of what's inside your house. You've already seen everything uh, all over the place, people, somebody has been through your house, going through your stuff, taking your stuff, some stuff missing. You haven't even walked inside. But you already know in your mind that that's what's on the other side of that door. You created a scene. That's a story. Scene after scene after scene. Problem after problem after problem with a solution at the end. So, the first way you retrain your brain is recognizing that this is not a new experience. You do not have to be um, feel any kind of way other than comfortable with writing your story. And the next way to retrain your brain is to make writing a daily habit. Because if the brain 
feels it every single day, then it becomes comfortable. It becomes the norm. So the way you make writing a habit is by, first of all, deciding why you want to write this story. Why do you want to tell this story? What is it about this story that you feel you need to tell it? If it's important enough, even if it's just for entertainment purposes, that's important because people need entertainment, especially today. People need to be entertained. That's a very important reason. So decide why you want to tell the story and make it important for you to tell this story. Because if it's not important, then it's going to be too easy for you to just put it aside and don't, not to deal with it anymore. Number two is to set realistic goals. You have to set goals that you know you can live with on a daily basis. Do not say you're going to write an hour a day if you know you don't walk in your house to eight or nine o'clock at night and then you still have stuff to do. There's no way you're going to sit and write for an hour after all of that. If you only have five to 10 minutes to give to writing, give five to 10 minutes to writing. Just make the commitment to do it every day at a realistic amount of time for you. Don't worry about what everyone else is doing. Don't worry that people write a thousand words. Maybe that doesn't fit into your lifestyle. Write what you can because remember, it's the small changes that make the biggest difference. And plus, those five minutes of writing is better than nothing. Number three is to find an accountability partner. Find someone, whether it's your spouse, your children, your parents, friends, find someone. Tell them what you want to do. Tell them about your writing. Tell them you want to make it a habit. Tell them you're trying to do it every day and ask them to hold you accountable. Ask them to check on you. Make sure that you're doing it. Knowing you have to answer to someone would make it more will probably give you more incentive to go on and do it because you really don't want to have to tell them every day, no, I didn't write. No, I didn't write. No, I didn't write. You want to tell them you wrote. So you're going to be more um, encouraged to get it done. If not, a writing group. A lot of cities have writing groups. Find a writing group. Join a writing group. Go to the meetings. Become active and Share your writing with your writing group. They also will hold you accountable. And number four, try different methods. You don't always have to sit in front of your computer to write. You can write paper pencil. You can write in the notes on your phone. When I did my first novel, I wrote a lot on my phone at the red light, taking a man. I wrote a lot on my phone. <laughs> I didn't have to always be in front of my computer. I had a story, I wanted to tell that story, and I did however I could. Plus, it's a good, it's good to switch it up some because that also helps your creativity. And I read that writing helps it a lot. It's something about the pen on the paper that's supposed to help really stir up the creativity. So if that works, please by all means do it. So here's a quick quick recap of what we've done. So far, what we talked about so far, we talked about starting where you're inspired. You don't have to start at the beginning. Maybe you're inspired to write the ending, write the ending. Observe your surroundings, get out your head, be more mindful, be more in the moment of what's going on around you. Search outside the box for writing ideas, for story ideas, and train your brain for writing. All right. Tip number five, and probably my favorite one of all, because I love, 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 love character development. Love character development. Tip number five, let your character sell your story. Let your character sell your story. Characters sell stories. And the only way you can do that is by developing some really good characters. So. Imagine you're at a party, people all around complaining if they're talking at all. They may not even be talking at all. If you're at that kind of party, how long are you going to stay at that party? Unless you just don't have a ride, you're probably going to be out of there in a few minutes. Same thing applies to your book. If your characters have no life, if they're boring, if they're all negative, your reader's going to put it down. They don't want to read that. 
So you have to make your characters realistic and you have to make them interesting. Have you ever overheard a conversation and you just knew the people they were talking about were real only to find out they were not? That happened to me. True story. When I was little, my mom and aunt were having a conversation about this guy and they were talking about how dirty he is, how manipulative he is and how he did so and so wrong. And like they were just going on and on and on. Now I'm small. I'm not supposed to be listening, but I am. I'm ear hustling because I don't know who is that. Is that the guy down the street? The guy at the church? What are they talking about? Child, they were talking about the young and the restless. Not even real, but it sounded real. It sounded like they were talking about real people, but that's because the writers developed them so well, so realistic that they felt real. They feel real to us. We all, we know Victor. He a part of our family. That's how, and it's called 3D, making your characters 3D. And I know that's a TV show, but it's the same writing. So I already jumped ahead. What are 3D characters? Realistic. Everything they do, everything they say, everything goes along with who you created them to be. They stay in what who, whoever they're supposed to be, that's what that that's what they say. You that's how they talk, that's how they live, whoever you created them to be. They don't get outside of that yet. So I've kind of been on a Criminal Minds Netflix binge over the Christmas break. So I use them as an example because even though you have an array of characters all in the same field, all in the same line of work, they are all so very different. They all dress different. They all speak different. They all enjoy different things. Their past experience are different. Their upbringings are different. They're so different. And you know, if you hear a line, you'll know who said it. If you hear someone saying something that's very, very smart, you know that came from Reese because he's very, very smart. If you hear someone talking about Italian food and Italian wine and um, jazz music, then nine times out of 10, that came from Rossi because he, he's all into Italian and jazz and just the culture and everything. So they were real developed. And I know from script writing, because I am writing a script, well, I've written a script and I'm filming now, I know that the same thing that goes into developing a character in novel goes into developing a character for your script because the director and the casting agent has to be able to look at your script and have a clear idea of who would fit this character based on the personality that I created, based on the look that I created, based on the experiences that I created. Who would have that look, that fit? So I still have to develop them even though it's for TV. So here are some tips for creating 3D characters. Tip number one, and this is a secret, don't tell nobody. But when I'm writing, I use people that I know. Why? Because I know them. I know their personality. I know their facial expressions. I know what makes them laugh. I know what makes them upset. I know what makes them tick. I know what their responses will be to certain things. I know them. So I use certain people in my writing to help develop my characters. Of course, it's not the same experiences that my family or friends have had, but some of their personality traits I do put, I do use with my characters. And you should too. We talked about people watching, people watching to make sure that, you know, you're looking for, like I said, the facial expressions, the responses, the body language, all of that kind of stuff because Men and women have totally different expressions, totally different body languages, all of that good stuff. So you want to make sure that you are really people watching. You can use actors. Actors in your story 
not use actors, but if there's an actor that you like, a role that they're playing, and you really, really like that person, use them. Use their expressions, use their facial, their body language, you know, just develop your character around someone else, but make it so different that no one even knows it's about someone else. Also, facial expressions. You really have to pay attention to facial expressions and body languages to communicate because 65% of communication is nonverbal. For example, my child does something and I'm upset. I don't have to go and say, I'm upset. They're going to get a look and that look says, I'm upset. We do it all the time and your characters need to do it too because your characters have to be realistic. It's now, of course, you're not going to have a whole book where they're just not saying anything, just use body language. But a lot of the times you do need to show their, their body language and their facial expressions. And your character must have flaws. They cannot be perfect because we are not perfect. They have to have some flaws some kind of way. And their flaws, you can't put flaws just to put flaws. Let's say if it's, it's an inner flaw, it has to serve a purpose. Um, if it's an outer flaw, like a scar or something, it has to serve a purpose. Maybe that scar um, came because of a tragic accident or something that has changed or shaped that person into who they are, that scar has to be meaningful, but it also makes them stand out and it's distinctive to who they are. So make sure whoever, whatever flaw you give them, it serves a purpose in your story. Make sure that their voice and their actions are true to who you created them to be. Do not have a 50 year old sound like a 10 year old, things like that. Create, make sure that their voice match their age, match their background, match their actions, all of that. Your characters must show growth. Your character should change from the beginning to the end of the book. That's the purpose of the book, to show the change. That's what people want to see. When, your cat, when we first meet your character, your character is coming with some stuff. Your character has some problems. They have goals they're trying to meet that they just can't get to for some reason. They have a lot of baggage that they're bringing. And just everything is going wrong for this character. But in the character's mind, they may feel like it's all good. Everything's wonderful. They convince themselves that it's okay. That... Um, an example, my last novel, Double Down and Dirty, my main character, Jade Bordeaux, Jade did not trust men. She did not trust men at all, but that's because of her dad. Her dad was the governor of Louisiana. Her dad could not claim her because she was not for his wife. She was for the lady who cleaned their house. Their house. So he could not claim her, and Jade has always felt you know, neglected. She's always felt like she wasn't good enough. So she looked and searched for acceptance in all the wrong places. But she finally got to the point where she was tired of that too. And she decided, you know what? I don't need, I don't need a man. I don't need anything. All I want is to be in my business. I want to be a career woman. I don't want to focus on anything, anything that doesn't have to do with building her business and starting her career. Jade had no time for, but it wasn't true. She did want love, but she convinced herself that she didn't. So in the beginning, when we meet Jay, she's very raw. She's hurt. She, she's very quick with the tongue. She, you know, she's dismissive. But things happen throughout the course of the story to chip away all that hardness around her heart. And at, by the end, we see a totally different Jay. Jade is softer, she's more accepting, she's willing to take different risks, not just with business, but also with love. So that's growing, showing growth in your characters. And your character have to have clearly defined strengths and weaknesses. We should know your character's strength and weakness because it shows up in their actions, it shows up in their dialogue, it shows up wherever they are. If they are high strong, then they are high strong, period. Until we see start to see that change in them. This is one of my favorite authors, Kimberla Lawson Roby. And I use Kimberla because I wanted to show why it's so important to develop good 
characters. Because once you develop a character and your readers fall in love with them, you can carry that story, those characters to many, many, many more books. Kimberla started the Curtis Black series in 2000. Kimberla just released her last Curtis Black book, 2016. She's written 14 Curtis Black books. Now, of course, over that span of time, it wasn't all just about him. But because she developed her main character, which was Curtis Black, she developed his wife so well, she was able to have her story. And his children, when they grew up, she developed them so well, and we felt a connection to them, that she was able to tell their story. So it just went on and on and on. Now, a lot of authors do not like writing series because they get so tired of these characters. They just want them to go away. But readers love series love them. It's just like a TV show. They look for that. They want it just like with Scandal. Every Thursday they were waiting for Scandal to come on because they feel a connection to these characters and they want to see what's going to happen next. So if you want to carry this writing thing out for a long time, make sure you spend time developing your characters, not only your main character, but also your supporting characters. Give them enough life so that they don't take over the story because the story is about your main character. But you have what we have enough information about the supporting characters that if you decide to do a book on them, we know enough to care about them too. So that's something that you really want to think about. Homework number three, make a list of people you know. What are some of their qualities that you can use in your characters? And spend some time with your characters. Do a journal with your main character. Um, maybe, you know, think of anything, a day that was really tragic for your character. Write it in their voice, how they responded. Um, or something that made them really happy, how they responded. And you can do the same with all of your characters because the thing is, if you don't have a clear idea of who these people are, then you will not be able to write them so that we have a clear idea of who these people are. We want to feel like we know them. We want to feel like they are, they could be a friend. That's how well we know them. We know their, um, their life history. We know their job, why they chose that job. We know where they live, why they chose this particular place. We know so much about them that, and we begin to care about them and we want to know more about them. So that's how you keep readers and that's how you sell books because when your reader start talking to other readers about this person and other people are hearing and they want they get intrigued and they well I want to know about these people too they're going to start buying the books because word of mouth is still the best form of advertisement and you want your readers talking and characters will make them talk tip number six is to focus on writing on leap now that you have all of this ready, all of this, we know why you're not writing. We know how to start writing. We know how to develop our characters. Now it's time to focus only on writing. There are two roles in the writing process, the role of the author and the role of the editor. And actually there are more than two roles, but these are the two main things. When you think about writing, you think about the author and you think about the editor. These two people cannot exist at the same time. They can't not exist at the same time. Either you're going to write this story or you're going to edit this story, but you will not do both because you will never get it done if you're trying to write and edit at the same time. Writing is creative. Editing is technical. That's why it's hard to do them both because you're switching. You switch it from being creative. You switch it from that creative side of your brain to the technical side of your brain. Then you're going back to creative, back to technical. It's just too much. If you're writing, stay in writing. Choose a day where you just edit. Trust me, you're going to edit. You're going to, most of what you write the first time, you're going to throw away anyway. If your first draft is not garbage, if it don't suck, you did something wrong. That means you were editing and you should not be editing. You should only be writing your work. Your first draft should be horrible. It should sound horrible. It should look horrible. You should not want anyone to see it, but that's good because the first draft is just to get it out. You have to get it out. Once you get it out, then you go back and you fix it up and pretty it up. But you have to get it out first. And that's why I say it's actually more than two. Research. 
you can't research and write at the same time. And see, this is where I had my problem because I wrote, like my last book, I wrote the setting was in New York. Well, I've never been in New York. So I had to research and I would find myself writing a scene and I may, you know, name someplace in New York. I've never been there. So what do I do? I jump over to YouTube and I start researching and looking at this place so I can really describe it well so that it is realistic. And then I go back to writing. Well, that took so long, but that's because I didn't know about this tip until after I wrote the book. Um, when you stop, you, you research, you also care your creative flow because again, your mind is switching from different modes. So this is the tip that I found out after I wrote my book is to save a space. I wrote Janet while we sitting down Fifth Avenue, though she was rushed, she couldn't help but notice. I don't know what she noticed on Fifth Avenue because I hadn't been to Fifth Avenue. Instead of going to YouTube to look for your Fifth Avenue or going to Google to look at pictures of Fifth Avenue, I just type in research Fifth Avenue, bold it, and I may write down the page number, go back to it later, keep on writing. Save that space, save a day for researching later, not while you're writing. So you have a writing day, you have an editing day, and you have a research day. And honestly, your editing day will not come until you have finished your entire first draft. Once you've gotten it all out, then you go plug in your research, then you go back and read it and edit it. Don't even think about editing until you finish writing your first draft. So this is my friend, Tanisha. Tanisha is a manuscript evaluator. She was also a contributing author, to a anthology, a romance anthology that we'd all written together. Tanisha's always been a manuscript evaluator, which is very close to an editor. So when she decided to write her own story, she had trouble. Why? Because she's used to editing. She's used to critiquing. It's, she's not used to just writing. So it was hard for her not to critique her story as she wrote it. And that slowed her down. So we had a conversation and I told her, you, you really going to have to stop because you're never going to finish the story. Just write. You will edit later. Thankfully, she listened and she was able to write her first draft. And I said, thankfully, because unfortunately, um, in October, Tanisha passed away. Tanisha wrote her first draft, but she never saw her story published, which is very, very unfortunate. And I don't want you to do that. I want you to write and I want you to publish and I want you to use all the time that you have available to get it done. Tanisha and I used to kid all the time that we were doing everything other than what we were supposed to be doing. We were both working on our books at the time and we were doing everything else. And it was just hilarious for us at that time that we weren't taking the time to write, not knowing what was, you know, what she would be facing up ahead that would prevent her from writing. And she wanted that time back, but of course she couldn't get it back. And Tanisha was a person who really loved to encourage people. So I know she would not have any problem. She would tell me, encourage them to do it. Do it while you have the time to do it. Okay, now we're on to tip number seven, which is to use the right tools. As you see, W-R-I-T-E tools. Tools for writing, tools to make writing better, make writing go faster, hopefully, and all that good stuff. Other than a computer and pencil and paper, there are other tools you can use to make the writing process a lot easier and a lot faster, such as novels. Novels are your friend. When I wrote my first book, I swore I was not gonna read because I did not want to accidentally take something from their novel and put it in my novel. So I stopped reading. That was the worst mistake ever. And I realized that later because novels help you. Not only are you learning how other writers, especially writers that you really like, if you're reading their book and you're reading how they have developed their characters and you're reading how the plot goes with the character and the, how they describe the setting and the words that they use and all of, you know, if you're reading all of that, it's helping you in your writing, but you may also read something that will give you an idea. Maybe you're stuck. Maybe their characters does. Maybe their characters character <laughs> does something that you could change. 
but could help you in your story. So don't put down the novels. Read as much as you can actually while you're writing because trust me, it helps so much. So that's one, two. The next one is to journal. Journaling is good because it helps with your creativity. When we're writing, when we're working on our novels, when we're working on our manuscript, even though we try not to do it, we all do it. We're thinking about, are they going to like this? Is this going to sound right? We're thinking about how everyone else is going to feel about our work. And that's hard when you're trying to create a story. When you're journaling, you know no one's going to see that but you. So you don't have all the added pressure. You're just writing. And that writing is going to help your creativity again to start to flow. And through your journaling, you may uncover something that you can use in your book. So you need to journal every day. This is a word processor. I found this on Amazon, but another author actually recommended it. It's the AlphaSmart word processor. It's not new. Word, processor, word processors have been around forever. But this one is really good. It's not expensive. It's like $20-something. Dollars. It's really good because it's not connected to the computer and you can't go to Facebook and you can't check your email and you can't go to Google. All you can do on this thing is type. So it helps with the distractions. And it's so easy. All you do is type. You pull up a blank Word document on your computer. You plug in the AlphaSmart to your Word document and press send. And all of your words are now in the Word document. It's easy. It's really easy. And it really helps to keep you focused. Dragon is good if you type slow or if you like to handwrite your um, manuscript and you want to type it, you don't, I mean, you don't want to type it all back up. You can use Dragon. All you have to do is dictate it and Dragon will type it while you speak it. Now, I've never used Dragon, so I can't really say how well it works, but I do know people who used it and they seem to like it. Grammarly is an editing program that you won't need until after your first draft is done, by the way. But you may want to go on and put it on your computer. It helps with finding errors throughout your document that word, some things that word just wouldn't pick up on, like repetition of, you know, if you're using words too many times, or if a sentence is a run-on sentence or it just doesn't make sense, Grammarly will underline it and ask you to check it, maybe shorten it, you know, things like that. So it's really good. And if you download it on your computer, it actually works with your social media sites. So if you misspell a word on Facebook or Instagram or what have you, well, not Instagram because you can't do that on the computer, but on Facebook then or Twitter, it will underline it and you can correct it. The next one, I just found this one and I'm really not sure how to say it. I think it's novel or something like that, but it's good because it keeps up with your writing. Every day it tells you, as you can see, how many words you've written in all, how many words you wrote today, this month, this year. You can set a goal and it'll let you know if you've reached your goal and all kind of stuff. It also um, syncs with Google Docs and it syncs with the Dropbox. So you don't have to worry about losing your work. And trust me, that is the worst feeling ever because it's happened to me. I have lost like so many chapters and it would, Oh my gosh, I'm not even going to talk about it. But I've lost a lot. And this helped you not to make the mistake I made and lose your work. This is Scrivener. These things have some strange names. But anyway, this is a word processor program and it's an outliner. It's designed for authors. I have not used it for my novels. I use this for my script because it help, it formats my script and, you know, it formats it in a script format so I don't have to manually do it. But it's good because you can write each scene and it puts it on this cardboard looking thing and it, you know, it breaks it down and you're able to transfer it into your documents. And one good thing about Scrivia is if you're writing an ebook, you can format it in this program for ebooks because ebooks. The, you know, they don't take Word documents and things like that. You have to format your ebook for um, electronic devices. So this will do it. 
Tip number eight is to invest in mentoring. My writing changed, kid you not. When I invested in a mentor, I was not doing it on my own anymore. I had someone to guide me, someone with more experience. She helped me, she coached me, she fussed, but it was for the best. And after her, I was a best-selling author. I was not on the best-selling list until I worked with her. Now I have mentors for everything, coaches for everything. I have a social media coach. I have a coaching coach, um, writing coach, health coach, because if it's not an area that I am familiar with, I don't really want to have to spend the time learning all this stuff on my own when I could just pay someone to share it with me. My social media coach, I worked with him for two hours and I have pages and pages and pages of notes. It would have taken me so long to learn all the information that he shared with me and some of the tips he gave me, I probably wouldn't have found on my own. It was well worth it. Let me say that. This is Joyce. Joyce, who's really Dr. Joyce, became a best-selling novel author for the first time after her coaching sessions she struggled with her first draft she had a lot of ideas she just wasn't sure how to put them together joyce as i mentioned is a doctor not a medical doctor but she has her doctorate and she loves big words i call them million dollar words throughout her whole manuscript with all these million dollar words that the readers would have put down because they would have been grabbing a dictionary every sentence trying to understand what Joyce was saying. We went through her manuscript. We took out all those million dollar words. We talked through her story and clearly outlined where she was going with this story. What was the end? How can we get them there? Once we did that, Joyce was done. It took her about a month, maybe two, but remember she had already been writing, but she was able to just take off with it now because she didn't have those blocks anymore. So why you should have a mentor. A mentor can help you fast track your way through the writing process. A mentor will help you motiv help motivate you and to keep you going because we all need motivation. A mentor will guide you and help you clear the path to the end because they've been there. And a mentor, with a mentor, you will have access to a wealth of knowledge. I've been doing this for eight years. I've attended so many seminars, so many workshops, so many books written, I mean, read so many books, so many videos, talked to authors, interviewed authors. Like, I've done so much. And you can spend eight years doing it if you want, or you can use someone and pick their brain and get it done like that versus spending your time trying to figure it out. A mentor also helps to keep you from being overwhelmed. My first book, I was very overwhelmed. I didn't know what I was doing. I just knew I wanted to write this story. I knew nothing about character development. I knew nothing about plot. I knew nothing about setting. I knew nothing about nothing other than the fact that I wanted to write this story. And it was stressful because when I sent it off to be edited and my editor was just an editor. She wasn't trying to teach anything. She was just editing. So she would just make her suggestions and I would have to try and figure out, what do you mean they're not, they're flat? Why are they flat characters? What does that even mean? That kind of stuff. You have a mentor, she'll tell you what it means. But before you even get to an editor, your mentor will make sure your characters are not flat, by the way. So let go of the doubts. You don't have to do this on your own. You can take action, and instead of spending all your time trying to figure it out, you will be spending that time writing and getting your book done. And imagine how good that's going to feel when you are done. You have this book out. It is complete. It is off to publishing. Now you're just waiting for your proof copy to come in so you can start selling. That's what you want. You don't want to spend your time researching how to publish, how to find an editor, how to find a book um, cover designer how to format a book, how to put it on Amazon, where to send it off to be printed. You don't want to have to do all of that. How to get an ISBN, how to go to the con Library of Congress, all, how to get a copyright. It's so much. You can spend all your time doing that if you want to, or you can spend your time focusing on writing and let someone tell you step by step what you need to do. Once you finish with this, now we're moving on to this, and this is how you do this. 
That's what you want. You don't want to do this on your own. So what do you need to start writing your best-selling novel? The tips all by themselves will jumpstart your writing career. Today, right now today, the tips that I've given you, which are to start where you're inspired. You do not have to start at the beginning of your story. You do not have to, you don't think you have to start at the very beginning. Don't think you have to figure out how I'm going to start this story. What are they going to do? Start where you're inspired. Whatever story you're trying to tell, whatever scene is in your head right now, write it. Start writing it. Even if it's the end, maybe you know how you want your story to end. Write the ending. Because once you write the ending, everything else is going to start flowing and your ideas are going to start flowing on how they got to the end. Write whatever you're inspired. Number two is to search outside the box. If you have no idea what you want to write, look for ideas. Go to blogs, go to newspaper articles, watch the news, listen to music, watch people. Um, the Bible, talked about the Bible. Great ideas in the Bible. Please don't rewrite it verbatim. Make it your own. But some of those stories in the Bible would be very good to tell today in modern day time, especially the Virgin Mary and um, Abraham and Sarah. Now, that would be something. 90-year-old pregnant, it happens, but yeah, no. So anyway, search for ideas outside of the norm. Train your brain. Remember, your brain is wired for failure. And if you're just joining, that means that your brain is, the brain job is to protect you. And because the brain does not know when you're excited or when you're fearful, because the feeling is the same to the brain. It's, it's the same emotion in the brain. For the brain, fear and excitement is the same emotion. So the brain's job is to say, hold up. This is, this is, this is strange. This is not new. I mean, this is new. We don't want to do this. Remember what happened last time. You may want to just shut this down. Go back to what you're used to because you're comfortable there. And comfort to the brain means protection. So it's your job to retrain your brain to make writing a comfort zone. And the only way you can do that is A, recognize that you write, you tell stories every day, you create stories every day. Things happen in your life. If your phone rings at four o'clock in the morning, you've already created a story that is bad news and you haven't even answered the phone. If you come home and your door is wide open, you've already created a story that someone has broken into your house, they ramshack your stuff, they stole your big screen TV and you hadn't even walked in the house. We create stories every day. So it's nothing new. Another way to retrain your brain is to write every day, making writing a habit. If writing is a habit, then it's not unusual. And making writing a habit means to set realistic writing goals. Whatever time you devote to writing is the time you devote to writing. If it's five minutes, if it's two minutes, write something every single day. It will make a difference. Um, not only that, you may want to find an accountability partner, bring your family in, let them know what you're doing so that they can motivate you and keep you pumped up, find a writing group, something that's going to inspire you to sit down and get the story done. And you do not have to type every day. You can write on your notebook. You can write in your notes on your phone. Whatever you need to do, you can write at the red light on your phone. Whatever you need to do, write every day. Make it a habit so that the brain will say, we like this. We want to do this. You know how people start working out and the more they do it, they just do it just like automatic, like they're addicted to it. But that's because it's a comfort for them now. It's no longer something strange. It's no longer something fearful. It's no longer the brain saying, nope, don't do that. Now the brain's okay with it. So that's what you have to do. You train your brain to enjoy writing. Number four is to let your characters sell your story. Your characters have to be so well developed that your readers love them and your readers talk about them and the, your books are selling because your readers are talking because your characters are so good. Your characters sell your story. Focus only on writing, not on editing, not on research. Writing first. Observe your surroundings. Get out of your head and observe what's going on around you. There are story ideas all around you happening every single day, but because our mind is so focused on every, uh, everything other than what's in front of us, we miss it. If you're out with your friends, be out with your friends. Listen to the conversations that's taking place. Observe their facial expressions. Observe their body language. Like right now, I talk with my hands. 
Don't, you know, these are things that make your characters feel real if their hands are swinging all over the place while they talk. Because a lot of people talk with their hands. A lot of your readers will identify with characters who talk with their hands because they may talk with their hands. You make them real. Use the right tools and invest in a mentor. So is this the opportunity you've been waiting for? Imagine writing a chapter a week. I wrote my first novel in 2009, but it wasn't until 2012 that I made it to the bestsellers list. And that's because, like I told you, I was able to work with a mentor. She shaped my writing. She helped me out so much. And I, I, my writing was different. So what's your goal for your book? What will you do when you're able to hold your book in your hand? You're going to have a book lunch and celebrate with your family and your friends and why are you writing this book? What's so important about this book? What's so important about this story that you have to tell it? Hold on to that. It could be for entertainment purposes. It could be because you have a story inside of you that you feel will impact someone else's life. Or maybe you just want to write because you want to be able to leave something behind. Your words will live forever, even though we won't. So whatever your reasoning is for writing this book, Hold on to it and remember it. And there are three choices you can make today. You can decide to just keep talking about the story and just let it stay a dream. Or you can decide that you want to write, but you're going to do it on your own, which means it's probably going to take you a lot longer to get it done. Or you can let me help you. And not only will we create books that your readers love, but I'm going to walk you through the process each and each step of the way make it enjoyable, make it memorable, and make you successful. How can I help you? I can help you get clear on the story you want to tell and who your story is for. Because remember, your story is not for everybody. Everybody does not, don't, don't like every story. That's just the truth. So think about the type of people who would enjoy your story and what type of story they would want to read. That's who you're writing for, your ideal reader. Outline your story. That's what we would do. We help you outline your story so that when you sit down to write, you're writing. You're not wasting time trying to research or plan. You're just writing. And I'm going to help you plan your book launch because if you're working with me, you will finish this book and you will be published by hopefully the end of the year, if not sooner. So your chance to start is now. I'm inviting you on a call with me so we can figure out if I'm the person to help you, if you're the ideal client for me, because just like there are no ideal readers, there are no ideal clients. I mean, there, we have ideal clients and we have ideal coaches. I have to recognize that I can't work with everyone. You have to recognize that everyone isn't the right coach for you. So the free call is set up to see if we are able to work with each other. If so, then I will invite you into the program and we will go from there. So this is how you schedule a call, the LornaLewisCoaching.as.me. And that will come up again. So who is this for? You have to be passionate about writing. You need to be committed about getting your book done and you need to be willing to sacrifice the time that it's going to take because it's going to take time to get it done. Who is it not for? Someone who sees writing just as a hobby, just something fun to do, not really ready to make it a business or make it a success because if it's just a hobby, you can put it down, pick it up whenever you want. So if that's what you want to keep doing, then this isn't, I don't want you to even waste your time on this program because it's not, you're not ready for it. You are ready for it if you're committed to writing every day. And if you are ready to stop making excuses, and you're serious, no excuses, get it done. Then that pro this program is for you. Why am I doing this? On our call, you'll get a clear idea of the story you want to tell, who's your target audience, how to outline your story, and to use your time better. If you believe, like I said, that I'm the person for you, then I may invite you into the program, and we'll go from there. So what will I deliver? A writing schedule. I will help you with your writing schedule, a realistic one. I will help you align your story. I will help you get through the blocks because in writing, I don't care who you are, you will come 
to some blocks where you just feel like you just can't seem to move on? Is something stopping you from keeping up or from really making that scene work? Something. It helps to talk it out with someone else. So that's where I come in. Keep you motivated until the very end. You will come, you know, we all have those days where it's just like, you know what, I'm not feeling this anymore. I don't even know what I was thinking about doing this. I'm here as your cheerleader to help you get it done because obviously you want it. And you have access to free writing resources that I've accumulated over the years from workshops and seminars and all of that good stuff. And I would be your weekly accountability check-in. I will be checking in to make sure that you're writing and you're on schedule. So if we work together, you will be held to the same standards my coach held me to and that I now hold myself to and that she still holds me to because I still work with her. These standards are designed to set you up for true success and to help you become the author that you deserve to be. The program is designed to take you from outlining to publish, and the goal is to remove the book from your head and to place it in your hand. That is the ultimate goal for you to hold your book, your words in your hands. So again, space is limited because it is writing. Of course, I can't work with a whole lot of people at once. So if you're interested, the website again is lornalewiscoaching.as.me and that's where you're able to schedule a time that we can talk and figure out if this is the program for you. So that is the end of my eight tips. I really, really, really hope you got something valuable from spending your time with me. Um, if there are any questions, I'm about to put this back up some kind of way. Um, stop share. Any questions, you may ask them now. Hello, Mr. Jones. Let me see my chat screen. Here's my chat. Any questions going once? <laughs> any questions going twice so if not i am going to end this webinar again thank you for your time oh you're so welcome i hope i don't i'm not really sure when you came in but hopefully you heard enough that will impact your writing in some kind of way this rec i recorded it so it will be available and i can email it to you so you can see all of it um I'm here if you need help, just let me know. And that is it. So I am going to get off of here. I will not take up any more of your time. Thank you so much for spending your time with me and I cannot wait to hear from you soon. Have a great night.